I just tried Garuda Linux for the first time, and I guess, well, I tried three three different editions of it, so I guess three times for the first time. I'm pissed off because I've never heard of it before, and it got second place on Linux Guide. Let me just pull up, let me open up a, here, here's my latest deployment of this, and it's at the second place. Um, if I go to my spreadsheet, you'll see, well, actually, I don't even need to, you'll you see the ratings. It's got the art repos which have everything under the sun and it's all up to date and it's doesn't fall flat like cashew and never do with package management and your ease of installation because it gives you it, choice of whatever whatever gui package manager you want i'm mad because i'll never get to use it as a beginner i'll never get to experience if i if i had known about if i'd known i, I was already mad when i just, when i found open system tumbleweed because i was like if I had found this sooner, I would have been so much, so much happier. But I can still use that now. Garuda, I'll never get to use this. There will never be a situation in which I'll benefit from this because I'm not a beginner. Because I can just use Arch. It's so well done in so many ways. And yet, the, the issues I have with Garuda aren't quantified by these four ratings, which also pisses me off because it's exposed a flaw in my rating system that I had never thought would even be a consideration. Bloat. I had never heard of a bloated Linux distribution before. I mean, yeah, some of them make, some of them make poor choices, but, and some of them have some paid stuff that is a little annoying to get around like Ubuntu, but it had never been overwhelmingly bloated. This is not bloated in a malicious way. This is not bloated in the way Windows is with ads and tracking and poorly written software. This is bloated because it gives you too much choice. If you've never heard of too much choice, let me show you. Let me reinstall this. I will reinstall Garuda. Let's do the this one. This one looks kind of nice. This is their flagship one currently. They have so many of them right now. Let me just give you a quick overview. Got this one, got this one. Over here, KDE, 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 GNOME, Cinnamon, XFCE. Got Sway, i3, Hyper, Linux, or Tiling. KDE again, and then KDE again, but with the, the Nix OS subsystem. Um, usually it's like one edition per desktop environment. Garuda pissed me off in the same way that Ultramarine Linux did, except I saw Ultramarine Linux coming. That had been on my mental list of distros to test for a long time. And I knew it was going to be good. I knew it was probably going to beat Mint. But I I had heard about this for a long time, and yet I always pass it off as being, oh, it's just another one of those gaming distros. But for new users, this is great, and also terrible in some ways. Here's the installer. Um, it boots into a live environment, which is pretty standard. Let me full screen this. This opens every time. I don't know how to turn it off. There's probably a way to turn it off. There's There's got to be a way to turn it off. I'm not going to bother looking into that, because... I hope to God there's a way to turn it off. It seems like pretty basic functionality. I don't know, I can't find it. This is currently a live environment. Um, the installer is here. We will go through this after we install. The installer is fine. It's the Colomar's installer. Beyond this kind of theme, they haven't really done anything to it. Like, um, Kaos, I think. Chaos, however you pronounce it. Has a much more customized version of the Colomar's installer. This is pretty basic. In fact, if you've installed another distro with this before, it'll be very familiar and easy. But after that, there's two giant menus. First, let me go over the desktop experience. After you install it, there's no um, option for auto login in the installer, so I, it'll show me the password screen every time. Here's the desktop environment. They've changed a lot of things. It's single click to open files in the desktop and in the file manager and here, which is not what most desktop environments do. They have changed this up completely, which there is a lot of tab management stuff here. The changes they made make it feel unique, but also unpolished. Whenever you boot up for the first time, um, in fact, I believe I can open it back up and close it from Guru to Ronnie. There is something called the Setup Assistant. If you thought distro decision paralysis was bad, this is the root of my issues with Garuda's user experience. There's too much to choose from, and it's not very well explained. Of course, you can always search up some of the things that they give you options for on the internet, but at that point, why are you using Garuda? Garuda didn't really do anything other than give you the name of something that you don't know what it does. This runs the first on first install, and you don't want to skip this. 
because if the desktop environment you've installed doesn't come with a software manager, I believe XFCE doesn't, you want to install one from here. And there are some small descriptions on some of these. There's nothing when you hover over it, there's, nothing, there's no flavor text. You're kind of just thrown into this menu that you can, you're not really, you shouldn't really skip because if you don't install these, you may not have them. They may not be one by default. And it doesn't really tell you what all of these do. It gives you some small text. You're not going to know that this one has TCP, TCP BBR. You're not going to know that this one gets updated very infrequently. You're not going to know that this one may be slower. And some of these, I don't even know what they are. Is this is this just recompiled for this CPU architecture? Or does this have something further? Patched make, implies that there's something further, but it doesn't tell you what it is. It's all of these menus, they remind me of Windows because they become a huge huge time sink where nothing is really explained well despite there being technically a lot of options there is i'll just go through these quickly so that you can pause if you want to see any of these in particular there is there's a lot of things here once you do that it would download the packages you selected and then you can reboot um and then it would open this up which is step two of setting up your system. Um, there is a lot of things in here. This is a web app. If you're on a slow system, this will not work very well for you. At least it's Tori, which isn't that bad. Um, this navigation is not super intuitive. If you go into one of these systems, there's not there's no back button. The mouse back button doesn't work either if you have that. You have to go into, f uh, no, you have to go to modules, then a welcome is how you go back. And here you'll see more things that aren't very well explained. What are, what are these? If I was a new user, I wouldn't know what any of these were or if I need them, and some of these things you do need. This, specifically, most apps, Pipewire is a newer audio server, um, and it has modules, that's what these three are, for Pipewire, that have support for apps that are built with, to use these older audio servers. And so they'll think they're interfacing with the also audio server, the Jack audio server, but in reality, they'll be interfacing with Pipewire through these compatibility layers. And these are, these are, also and Pulse Audio specifically, lots and lots of apps still require these. And so if you don't install them, those apps may not work. And Groot is great that it gives you the option to install them, but it doesn't tell you that you should, or why you should. There is a stark lack of accessible documentation. The ArchWiki exists, but it does not link to the ArchWiki. Except in here, if you go under help, hit search for content in the arch, arch wiki it does put you one step forward oh right this is this is fire dragon this is their super customized firefox this is the most bloated browser i've used in my life feature bloat not like advertising bloat again this is a very different kind of bloat than what windows does also if you're seeing my mouse lag that's not just you that's me i don't know what's causing that but yeah it'll open up the arch wiki but it's like asking someone a question and then them sending you a link to google.com like that's one step in the right direction the wiki is there a garuda wiki too there is i'm glad that they have that but if they could please yeah here if i'm um, i might link this in my guide if there's something really nice in here that everyone should read um this is just generic installation instructions i've have this i have this in my guide already first steps this might be really really good Things to do after installation. Please tell me what these things do. Give me some indication. So here, testing components. Can you tell me which ones I need? It doesn't say. It just says that this is what you do with it. It doesn't tell you much more than what the you want. Oh yeah, the title bar buttons are on the left, which is a little hard to get used to if you're not used to that. There are things in here you're gonna want. If you have Bluetooth and you're like, why isn't Bluetooth working? That's because it's disabled by default. And you have to go into this menu. It doesn't tell you this. You have to go into this menu and turn it on. These are things that other distros will have by default. And you, it allows you to do things that you might not want as well. You can have two firewalls running at once, which can get incredibly complex and quite annoying to debug if something is not working because you have two installed. Or three. I don't even know what this is. Open snitch? I mean, I know it's a firewall, but got the next subsystem, if that's your thing, that's a whole other can of worms. That's that's a whole like six hour video. You can set your shell. I've changed some of these out of curiosity to see how they've done it. Again, you can look these up, but it doesn't tell you out of the box. You have to look them up to know what they do. Common? Performance? What does this mean? Again, this is a double-edged sword. I mean, I'm I'm glad they have these, because, like, if I had... Some of these are incredibly useful tweaks. 
I don't know why they don't have Sked Etched. That seems like a pretty. That seems like something I'd, I'd expect them to have here, but they don't. I don't think they have Toon D. And, uh, that's, that's another thing that would be pretty good to have here, but they don't have here for some reason. But like Power Profiles, Damon. If I had if I had known what that did in the past, all these things. If I had been able to mess with these in the past, even without the documentation, I would have figured out they exist before I did without Garuda. But I feel like a user clicking these without knowing what they do, because there's no obvious indication what any of these do, could very quickly break things. And I have no way to dock Garuda points for this, because to install packages, they provide a graphical package manager, and by default on most distros is Octopi. I didn't install this. This came even though I didn't select it. Most of the other ones have graphical package managers, or in every one, the um, Welcome Assistant will let you install any crap graphical package manager of your choice. So it's got a good package man management score. It's got a good ease of installation score because it's just the normal Columara's installer that most distros use. It's not super complex or anything. And then it's based on Arch. So it has tons of software if you include the AUR, which I am. And almost all of that software is very up to date. And so it gets a great score. In this further packages heading, you can install packages that appeared in the Welcome Assistant as well as some others, I believe. I think there's more here than there were. This is not a full package manager. This is a preset selection of apps. So if something you're looking for isn't here, it may be in Arch, just not one of these pre-selected apps that are included here. It also has another section for software, gaming apps, which are, here we go. This, they should do this for everything. They should have um, info hover things for, for everything. This, there should be more of this. This is very informative. Yeah, it explains what Steam Native is. I mean, mostly explains it. If you don't know what native libraries are, or system libraries, or shared libraries, then you're not. it's not going to explain much. But it's better than just giving you the name of the thing you're turning on and off, and nothing more. I suppose display calibration can be um, gaming. Controller support. Oh, they have games here. No icons, but they have some open source games. Minecraft, where is this coming from? I don't know that Minecraft is in the Arch repos. I, I would be surprised if they were. Emulators. It's a lot of menus. It's a lot of menus. And paired with the Octopi, it's already a lot of menus and things on your screen at once. It can, it can be a lot. And with the chaotic AUR, which just compiles pretty much any, any AUR package it can find, it becomes really hard to... to Unless you pay attention to this, it becomes really hard to determine whether something comes from the AUR or from a system package because the K the chaotic AUR is a repo that is treated the same as system packages, even though they may be very low quality. This is on paper a great distro, but there are a lot of pitfalls that new users could fall into. Boot tools. I've not seen this menu yet. Boot tools. What is this? Oh, it's like you can do some kernel parameters. That's nice to have. Diagnostics. Um... This is like just system info. I'm not going to wait for that to run. That's going to take a while, probably. Oh, there it goes. Network tools. Uh, reader network assistant. Interesting. Set up a uh, start page. Okay, so it's just this. Start.reader.org. Just got more links. Okay. While I'm here, I may as well go through Fire Dragon. Um, it's got some stuff on the sidebar. Florp. Is this based on a Florp? It is. Okay, so this is based on Florp, I guess. If you like this look, you'll like this look. But that's not all. There are more looks you can get. There are so many different looks you can get for Garuda. This is just one of them. This is Maka. Oh yeah, whenever you try to make a change in here, it'll uh, it'll go up here and it'll be a pending operation. It's a little clunky, uh, but it does work. Snapper, um, OpenSUSE and Tumbleweed has this too, but they actually properly set it up. Here, it's... I'm not sure what app this is. I think this might be from Garuda. And this makes me think it's making snapshots whenever I make package changes, but I can't find them. I can't find these snapshots. I can hit restore, but kind of the point of Snapper is if you make a change with your package manager that makes your system unbootable, you can just go back in time and boot to a previous one. But here, to restore a snapshot, you have to boot your system and open this app, which isn't possible a lot of the time when you break something. Whereas OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which also uses Snapper to do this, you can just do it right from the boot menu. You don't actually have to have a working system to load a Snapper snapshot. I'll show what themes they're using in case you want to replicate this on another system. Um, this is Catpuchin. C-A-T-P-P-U-C-C-I-N. That's how it's spelled. Mocha. 
Um, I think this is the lavender version or mauve, one of the two. I don't remember. Um, Quantum, that is a that is a theme manager, um, which is probably making this quite heavy. If you want something similar to this, you could use Darkly. It reminds me of that. This plasma style, utterly round. You could try using that. This is also from Cat Poochin. Cleaner decorations. Tella, this is from Vince Luis. I know this one. This is the Dracula folders version. This is also from Cat Poochin. Not a huge fan of these cursors, but they're here. This would this would have done better. Default system sounds. Splash screen is from Garuda. And our login screen is from Cat Poochin, but it looks like it's been very customized for Garuda specifically. Um, this whole navigation scheme here, um, it's KDE, except they have moved this bar to the top. I think that might be a hot corner. I can't tell. We've got the start menu up here. I don't think this does anything. This text here. No, it doesn't. It's a calendar. It is a calendar. Calendar's in the middle. And then clipboard and all the basic stuff up here. There's a system tray, basically. And then at the bottom, it's not doing it anymore, but for a while it was um it was auto-hiding and it was collapsing down. You have to hover over this bottom part to get this dock to show up, but it's just stuck now. I think it may be because I don't have an app open covering it. If I do this, is it gonna Yeah, there we go. Now if I hover over it hover over it, it'll show up. Uh-oh. Where's oh right. Yeah, the title bars move up to here. If you full screen an app. They push the title bar buttons up here, it's to not waste space, which I think is kind of cool. It's not for everyone. I would definitely be careful if you use it when messing with the settings. I'll go over some of the, um, I'll go over the other, the heavily customized version of KDE, because that's, that's the other interesting one. It's very similar to this, except it has some different theming. I'll show it very briefly. It's called Dragonized, with a very, did I download it? Or I did not. I have not actually downloaded it yet. Since that 6 doesn't look like a G very much anyways, they should have made it 420. Please laugh. All right, I'll show this other theme in in the live I show since it's not very much it's not much different than um it's not much different than having it installed. Yeah, take your time. Oh, that's fancy. Got a different different boot screen or login screen, not boot screen. We already passed the boot screen, which was just the text. There is no boot screen. If you want one, you do install Plymouth. That's what that does. Yep, you've got the same thing. Um, very similar title bar layout. It does the thing with the title bars, buttons at the top when you full screen an app. Drag it, fire emoji, fire emoji. This one is, the the Mako one I can at least stand. This one I could never use. This is so absurd. I knew someone, these are the, um I think they're called candy or something, these icons. I knew someone that really liked these icons. Like, I could never stand it. <laughs> they were so bad. Um... This is the other one. If you want this, is Octopi? It is Octopi. Back when David was missing. Um, very interesting look. If you like this, you like this. And that's okay. It's okay to be wrong. The Cinnamon desktop looks very similar. It uses a similar theme and icon theme, although it the layout hasn't really been changed. This um this layout is very similar to Maka. Besides the icon theme and system theme, let me double check the name of the icon theme in case you want this for some insane reason. Beauty line. No, here's candy. This is beauty line. What does candy look like on here? That's a bit better, I think. It's a little bit thinner. This is missing an icon up here. Whatever it was, whatever is being used up here isn't available on candy icons. They had the candy icons installed by default. They certainly know their user base. Here's the winter decorations, the plasma style. Oh, they got their own plasma style as well. Application style also being done by Kvantum. Um, no idea what this color scheme is from. Sweet. Is that from... Oh yes, the candy icons are um, from a theme called the Sweet theme, I believe. And so that's probably what that color scheme is from. That's Garuda. A very interesting distro. Great on paper, with some caveats. Very complex. If you like tinkering, I think it'd be a great distro. Um, if you just want something that just works, I... Cannot recommend it. Like, at all. Oops, I forgot to say my catchphrase. The end.